want to give the opening remarks that we are thankful again for being in church on another Friday night. Air storms hit yeah. New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, I believe it was the night before last. Amen. Tornado went through there and they showed the devastation. Amen. And uh, there uh, were at least three earthquakes that hit that area over in Turkey and Syria. Mm -hmm. And God is surely trying to get the attention of somebody. That's right. Amen. But thank God he got our attention. Amen. That he might teach others that they might be attentive Amen. and save their soul before it's everlasting too late. Amen. So again, I'm glad that uh, True Light has been chosen to set apart. Right. To be the guiding light to the rest of the world. Man. As I've told you before, I'm going to tell you again. When we take a stand for righteousness, the devil's going to come against us like a flood. That's right. Man. But if we are steadfast in our resolve mm -hmm. and take each passing moment as a moment of victory, Amen. no matter how it looks right. on the surface, Amen. See, a lot of times the water can look real smooth on top, but you got to watch that undertow. Right. How many swimmers have lost their lives right. going into a lake and just going out there thinking a little bit of shallow water? And that undertow will catch hold of them. I know. It happened to me once. Amen. We used to swim out to what was called the third dock in the Huron River back there in Ypsilanti, Michigan. And you was macho if you could swim to the third dock. And most people swim to the little first dock and then the second dock. But to swim out there in the third, that third was out in the middle of the river. And I thought I was going to be macho. I made it there. But then I looked again. I got to make it back. See, once you get to the top of the place, you've got to make sure you know how to get back down to the ground. All right. Man. When you go to church and get yourself rooted and grounded, Make sure you know where you're going. Right. right. See, if I can correct today yesterday's mistakes, then I should be all right tomorrow. But I can't bring yesterday into today. Then I'm just starting all over again. It's like the teacher who failed the third grade student. you got to repeat the third grade over again. What? You got to get it right. Right. Amen. So thank God for his mercy. Mm -hmm. And thank God for the determination he's given us. And I'm saying this to let you know because you are small in number and because the devil attacks. You got to be strong mm -hmm. in your calling. Right. Because I said before, when God told Gideon, get me an army ready. All right. He said, well, wait a minute, you dumb cowards, you sent home first. All right. Amen. Right. God cannot deal with a faint heart. Right. Amen. But the weak right. say what? Strong. Say I'm strong. Christ I Christ. might be a little fearful, but oh, I'm ready to go. Right. I don't know how you're looking over the children, but right. I'm ready to go. Right. Say you're strong. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then you go forward. Yeah. Praise right. God. Man. So I thank God again for true light. Lord. And again, we give our great honor to our Lord Jesus Man. Christ, the one God who turned, Man. and the Lord that made everything. The Bible says it was made by Him. Without Him was nothing made that was made. Right. Hallelujah. Man. Glory to God's name. And praise God, He was the true light. Yeah. The light, the path of every man that shineth, that cometh into the world. Yeah. And that's why we are called the true light. Right. Amen. Amen. Because we follow after our daddy. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ. And we can never lose a fight. Right. We can get knocked down the time to keep. Right. He doesn't know what everybody knows. Right. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's just to strengthen you. Yeah. Man. I remember I was raised by a single parent. My mother raised us. And that, that tell you the story about the bully he used to jump on me at least a couple times a week. And my uncle told me, y'all be seated. My uncle told me, said, now listen, he had to be by the house one day. Come here, buddy, know with everything. My mother never put her arm around me and said, oh, you poor little thing. Because she knew she had to raise a boy child. 
He liked to date. Amen. Mm -hmm. At least most of the, those in this day and time. Not true like. But my uncle told me, he said, now listen, I'm going to show you something if you just believe me. And he just stood in my face. you got to believe me. I said, well, okay. He said, now that bully, he said, now I want you to listen. You walk up and you catch him unawares. Mm -hmm. And you hit him as hard as you can, right on the tip of his nose. Because right. if you hit him in the nose, his nose is going to bleed yep. automatically. Mm -hmm. And when he see the blood, he going to turn and run. Yep. And he even showed me, throw it from your shoulder and put your, put your weight into it. No, oh, man, I practice on his hand now. <laughs> Praise God. And I happened to catch that bullet. He was talking to some more people out in the schoolyard. And I said, well, this is the time. You know, time to be scared. And I hauled off and I touched one of the children. We turned out, popped him. They had a bike rack right in the back of the school. And about a block, well, I see a half a block back toward where the cars are parked. Was a set of swings. <laughs> he whooped me from that bicycle wrapped to underneath one of them swings. And a man happened to be coming by. He said, all right, you boy, you stop that right now. I should take you into this principal right now. Stop it. And I happened to think, some advice you get, you better make sure where you get that advice from. Because everybody ain't going to tell you the truth. Hallelujah. And that was a bad lesson he taught me. Praise God. The one thing is certain. Mama never said, oh, you poor little thing. She said, go wash your face. Get ready to get something to eat. Amen. So, church, when you get corrected and get your paper corrected, ain't no sense in you getting mad at the teacher. Because that ain't going to do no good. Since you didn't raise up the teacher. Right. You didn't appoint the teacher. Amen. I was sharing with somebody the other day how two of those pastors, well, at least one we know of in North Carolina, that stood against sodomy and lesbian behavior, Amen. how they put him on sabbatical. That's another term for firing him. Yeah. And the one, of you, you remember the uh, white Pentecostal pastor used to meet with us uh -huh. during that parade, yes. uh, what they call it, the gay right parade. Yeah. This last time we met together, six days later, they fired him. Wow. Said we don't we we don't we don't teach that anymore. We teach love. This is why the world is so messed up today. They got a misconception of the Bible. And that's why they're teaching all this compromise and compromise and compromise when God ain't never compromised with nobody. Hebrews sent him to the cross because he wouldn't compromise. Yes. When the apostles got themselves together, none of them ever compromised. Amen. And all of them died in a young age. Yes. I don't think any of them reached 40 except one, John. Yes. A young age. If they suffered for Jesus, what is it to us if we get knocked down a time or two? At least they ain't going to crucify us. Sometimes it seems like it don't it. <laughs> but you're not crucified. No, you still have your job, even though it's not always easy on the job. And look like the devil will come out of nowhere. Things going smooth, and all of a sudden, here he come. Mm -hmm. It's just to prove your faith. Yeah. To find out whether or not you truly in the true light. Amen. And if you are, you got to reflect God within. Amen. I want to go to... Uh, I think I want the 13th chapter of the book of Romans. Then I'm going, we're going to have a different type of panel tonight. Amen. Preaching on going to the Rosham and preaching from the Holy Ghost. In Romans uh, 13, uh, jump right into verse uh, 12. Uh, right quick and then I'm going to take my seat and have me a good time listening. Amen. Praise God. I feel happy tonight. Amen. I come, you know, I, I've been happy all day long. I came to church to have a happy time. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I don't care what the sudden they raining outside and tornado sirens going, but I come to church to have a good time. Hallelujah. If God be for you, who in the life to say, or what can be against you? Read, daughter. 
The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Now I want you to read that verse again. Let us walk honestly. Honestly? As in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness. And rioting is being, being in trouble and all that kind of mess. And being nosy and getting into other people's business. and All that foolishness. Read it. Not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision for the flesh. For what? The make not provision for what? For the flesh. Forget about it. This earthly body. Forget about what pleasures you might receive on this earthly journey. It's not about that. I told you many times it's about your calling in Christ Jesus. And He called you to bear witness of the truth in these final and last days when all this mess is around us. Amen. Throwing stones through people's windows and all that kind of craziness. Why? Because we're standing up for the truth. You think a little stone going to keep us from. Bear witness of this great truth. Right, you think a little old car accident going to cause us to turn away from God? Right, right. You think a little bit of discouragement going to come against us and cause us to leave the Pentecostal church? Right, right, right. Who's here? Right. Who's here? Right. We're going on in Jesus' name. No backing down and no backing up. Right. Ain't no coward spirits here. Right. So, we're going to maintain this faith right. no matter where we go. I remember when I was a young minister, I used to wonder why my pastor stayed in that PAW. And I hope over YouTube, some of you PAW hypocrites can hear me. And I call you genuine first class hypocrites. Glory, hallelujah. I don't care about whether you baptize in Jesus' name or not. Because you baptize in Jesus' name, that don't mean you're saved. By their fruit, you should know them. By their character, yes. it'll tell whether or not you're saved or not. Yes. And they had a Northern District Council meeting in Detroit, and I went quite naturally. And I caught Bishop, that Bishop in Grand Rapids, what is his name? Abney. Abbey. 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 And I caught him in the sanctuary, uh, the corridor lane. <clears throat> and I said, well, Bishop, I said, excuse me, but I just wonder why some of the sisters got now fingernail polish and earrings, and my pastor don't teach that. Right. Now they're in the same organization, PAW, this is Northern District Council. Yeah. He said, well, he kind of looked at me. You know I have to set a trap for him. He said, well, uh, minister, we used to teach that, but we don't teach that no more. Now you know what church I came from and what Elder Ross stood for. Amen. I said, oh, 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 okay. And I made up my mind right then and there as I'm through with this organization. And one night I was sitting next to my pastor, some night sometimes I sit next to him. I can't think of the other men who sit next to me. But I, I just happened to ask the pastor, I said, Pastor, why are some of these churches now going back to earrings and makeup? Yeah. He looked at me, he said, do you think I can't see it? I said, Pastor, why don't you leave? He said, no, I'm not going nowhere. Amen. He said, I'm gonna teach the truth and make them bend and bow to the truth of the Bible. I'm not going nowhere. So that's, that was a decision he made. And I want to say to that hypocrite pastor, I hope you're watching over YouTube. I knew him very well. When pastor died, they voted him as the pastor. And it wasn't two months he fellowshiped with a Baptist church. And the Baptist, and a, a, a pastor taught against that. Two can't walk together except they agree. Amen. Read that verse, uh, what was that verse 14 again? But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make not provision for the flesh. Don't make any provisions for being happy in this world except a spiritual happiness. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. I ain't talking about coming up and work. Oh, I got a good dinner waiting for me. I'm going to turn the TV on, watch the basketball game, just lay back and relax. That might be fine in this proper context. But I think sometimes you got to figure out, maybe I better go home and get in that Bible. Get a little stubborn thing. Forget about the flesh. The flesh ain't going nowhere but to corruption. But the Spirit of God is going to quicken that mortal body 
when the trump of God sounds. And you know what? It's a lot closer, hear me, than what people think. That trump can sound any minute. I know one thing for certain. I'm ready. And I believe you are too. But I just want to give you a little bit of boost. I want to give you, like I said, it, it, uh, when we're going for, out for varsity, uh, give you a little pep talk. Sometimes you need a little pep talk. Yeah, you can win. Don't worry about the size of the other team. You can win. And everybody say, yeah. Everybody say, yeah. 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 It's an old, old varsity cheer yeah. that encourages you. Yeah. We need some encouragement every now and then. Yeah. But even if you don't have encouragement from the church, sometimes you've got to encourage yourself. Right. Pastor taught us that. Right. Encourage yourself sometimes. Man. Go on to work. Get you a song to sing. Even if you don't know all of it. All right, brother. Sing what you know. All right. And give the rest. All right. All right. We are in a day and time where the truth must shine like a guiding light to the rest of the world. That's why I try to keep you encouraged. And understand we are in a human body. Make no mistake about it. Times you do get a little bit down. But don't stay down too long. Right. Next thing you know, you come to church down. Right. Carrying that burden. Somebody sat next to you around you said, well, what's wrong with you? Oh, well, I just don't, I don't feel good today. But don't say it. All right, Father. If you don't feel good, keep it to yourself. <laughs> if you don't feel good, pray it out. Right. We're in the spiritual body. Though it's a physical domain, we're in a spiritual body because the spirit must quicken the mortal body. That's what quickens us when we die. They guarantee us to a heavenly reward. The spirit quickens the mortal body. But if you ain't got the right spirit, oh no, because when I speak, I'm speaking with the oracles of God. And I made the sacrifice long before you did. I told you before, that's why I'm not ashamed to ask you. Hallelujah. We're passing through here. Yes. Right, We're pilgrims. Yes. And you know where the money's going. That's right. Ain't going no Mercedes. Right. I ain't got no, uh, what they call it, one of them uh, jets that Creflo got, what they call them? Learjet. 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 I ain't got none of those. Oh, if I had the money, I wouldn't have one. <laughs> No, you don't have, you don't have me, ain't no flat tire, I'm way up here in the sky. <laughs> All right. All right, bro. You have my fruit pump, quit out on me, and I ain't got no cloud to park in. All right. All right. Lucy. Yeah. Have a good one. So, uh, I'd like to let uh, Mr. Creflo know, where did you get the money to buy an airplane oh. and pay a pilot on 24 hours standby? Yeah. I think the average pilot make about 125000 a year. Now, where do you get that kind of money? From foolish people that God chose you to feed his sheep. Now, the difference between feeding the sheep and robbing the sheep. Ain't nobody in your congregation got no idea yet why you got one. Hear me. Somebody told me that dog T.J. got one now. Ain't that something? But one thing for certain, you better one day get in that jet and try to stay in it. All right. Yeah, All right. All right. All right. But when that trumpet sounds, oh glory, it's going to be a sad day. And I say to those who go to them hypocrite churches, you don't have to go there. And some of you, I know you like to hide in the crowd. I get them back to church, they don't know what I'm doing. God do. God see everything you do. Yeah. Why not come to the true light? Right. Yeah. That you can be saved. Yes. Well, there ain't enough people there. Let me tell you something. You remember when Jesus, I'm going to let the minister speak in a minute. When Jesus had a critical teaching and the Bible said he fed the multitudes, then he went on a boat and told his disciples, push away from the shore. And then he taught them. How many? About 12. All right. Right. 
I counted when he went to Calvary, he had five. All right. His mother, natural mother. Yes. Mary Magdalene, that he cast out the seven demons. Yes. Right. One of the brothers. Yes. And, and John. Yes. Right. Was that four? Amen. Yeah, four or five. Right. When he went to the cross. Yes. And every disciple he had, except John, left him. Because they went back fishing. Amen. Glory. Right. And he stopped them from fishing and said, come on, I'm going to make you fishers of men. I'm going to make you preachers. Yeah. Oh. And you know what Peter said when he, when he saw him on the cross. I don't know him. Mm -hmm. That woman said, you, you look like him. One of the people that followed him. <laughs> Peter said, no, you, 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 you see him wrong. And finally she looked again and said, wait a minute, I know that was you. He got mad and cursed, didn't he? Uh, Cursed. See, I know not the man. And got mad and walked away. Can you imagine that? And he saw God face to face. So sometimes we get in a little bit of trouble. Listen, we ain't in near much trouble as Peter was in. But for one day down the line, Peter had to repent. And one story said when they caught him, they said, crucify me upside down. I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Lord and Savior. Now, that was a true story, but it sounds good. One thing for certain, you can read by his epistles. He repented. So, brothers and sisters, ain't nothing wrong with repenting. But let's not keep on repenting. <laughs> now, we're going to have a very difficult teaching for the panelists. And we're going to speak from the rostrum. Amen. Five to seven minutes as needed. But if you run out of gas after two minutes, that's all right. Don't feel bad. But I don't want you to have a full tank and go no 10, 11 minutes because you've got your brother and sister following you. We'll catch up with you the next time. All right. We're going to have opening remarks from Senior Elder Brooks, followed by Evangelist Shallow, Minister Victor, and Evangelist Rogers in that order. And I'll announce the other orders after this segment. I hope you're to keep that in the order in which I stated. Everybody understand? Amen. If you don't want to wait, govern yourself according. Amen. Praise the Lord there, church. Praise the Lord. Lord. Blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank God. God is great and worthy to be praised. Let's give a proper hand. Bless words. Words of encouragement. Amen. Keep, keep the church on our feet in Jesus' name. I'd like to lift up God, give them all praise, honor, and glory, and double and all honor to our highest theme, apostle, prophet, prophet, Bishop H. Walker. He's a lovely help and loving memory. All the thanks to God and true life family. Thank God for being on the church on the Friday night. Praise and lift up God. Very often, the Christ said, I will come and now is when the true worship must worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And thank God for these uh, the scriptures that um, that prophet had uh, gave for us. And I'd like to open up in Matthew 28 19. And it reads, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And um, that we know, first of all, that where people go wrong, that you have to be taught, but you have to be correctly taught. And you can't, um, you, you don't want to be taught by no T.D. Jason, no Joyce Myers, because they're going to lead you astray. They're going to lead you in the wrong direction. And that's why the Bible says, it told the apostle to teach, and then it mentions in verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I am with you all the way. And we know that God is with us. He said he'll be with us. Right. The Bible mentions about he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. And we believe that. But it mentions about uh, being taught. You know, and you can't be taught by no T.D. Jakes or Creflo Dollar, no Benny Hinn. You have to be taught by a true man of God. Amen. Thank God for all prophets. Because he's we've been taught by the best and we've been taught well. Yeah. You know? and, um, and we know that uh, Father, Son, Holy Ghost is uh, literally the titles of God. That's why in Acts right. Uh, 238, they asked people what they must do to be saved. Peter said, repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. 
for the remission of sins. They asked him what to do to be saved, and he told him, you got to be baptized and water baptized in Jesus' name. Yeah. That's the saving name. The title yeah. does not save you. Uh, it's the name that saves you. You Once you repent, I'd like to go into the subtext, Ezekiel, the 14th chapter, in verse 7, for... For everyone of the house of Israel, or a stranger that sojourned in Israel, who has separated himself from me, and set it up idols in his heart, and put it stumbling blocks of iniquity before his face, and come unto the prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, will, I the Lord, will answer him by myself. In verse 8, and I will set my face against him. And that's why... This world is in the condition that they in Amen. because they um not being not obeying the prophet. And that's why a lot of people that was in true light in the condition they in because they done left the prophet. <laughs> you know. And then like like the Bible mentioned, you know, uh, have no other God before me. I'm a jealous God. You don't put nothing before me. Not mama, daddy, sister, brother, son, or daughter, you don't put nothing before God. God is a jealous God. In verse eight, and I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb and I will cut him off from the midst of my people and ye shall know that I am the Lord yeah. and uh, you know God in other words he said I'm going to make you an example yeah. <laughs> but thank God that we're going to be good examples in Jesus name yeah. you know and like prophet mentioned that this is a deep teaching but thank God for it you know sometimes we need the deep word of God you know yeah. but the main thing that um that um you know we have to follow the prophet you know we don't want to be no try to be no stumbling block in the church we want to be a blessing to the church that's why we bring our glad tidings <laughs> that's why we bring everything to the house of the lord with joy and gladness so thank god for the word of truth and pray my strength in the lord this Friday night service. Yeah, um, yeah. I want to thank God for being here, meeting us here, and I want to thank God for the scriptures that Prophet has given us because it is an important teaching. Yeah. Um, and I do want to start with our main text in Matthew 24, um, verses 19 and 20. I'm sorry, 28. Yeah. Uh, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. And with the baptism, it's with the Baptist Church and the Methodist Church and all these different type of churches, they, they seek to confuse people because they refuse to baptize in the name of Jesus. They, they take a scripture like this and they misconstrue it and they'll use that as an example and run with it and try to tell you, well, it's in the Bible, it says Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but as it's been stated before, these are the titles. We, we're talking about the name. We, how, what is the name of the Father? What is the name of the Son? What is the name of the Holy Ghost? And if we connect that with Acts 2 at 38, which we've read multiple times, it talks about baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. And people will also use Romans 10 and 10 and take that and run with it and say, oh, well, if you confess the Lord, um, then, you know, then you're, you're baptized and they, you know, you don't even have to go in water. And that's the issue with the church today is that what they're using is they're, they're trying to take these scriptures and, they're not even reading out the King James Version Bible now. They have all these different type of translations yeah. at this point. That they're, they're not using the Word of God, but they're misconstruing it. And that's where the confusion comes in is people who are weak or people who are not, you know, are not as strong as true light. They will, they'll listen to a false teacher and hear the scripture and say, well, it does say in, in Matthew 28 that you need to be baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But that's the thing. They, they, use, they use that weakness to try to confuse you and they use things like Romans to try to confuse you, but you have to be, you have to be strong, you have to, um, you know, get out of that and not necessarily listen to these frost, these frost yeah. preachers, and because they, they use, uh, as the Bible will say, simple-minded people, um, and I want to go ahead and go to um, Ezekiel chapter 14, starting with verse 7. 
for every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me and set up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of, block of his iniqui iniquity yes. before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by, by myself. And I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb and I will cut him off from the midst of my people and ye shall know that I am the Lord. God has said in the, in the Bible that he will cut your, you will, he will cut you off if you know if you um, follow these teachings of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, follow this false baptism and not just that but listen to these false preachers who, who want to take all these people and they want to take your money, they want to um, they want you to be in sin like them. They want you to, you know, not necessarily come to the full knowledge of the truth because if they, if you don't come to the full knowledge of the truth, then their pockets are empty. They don't have anybody sitting in their church. Um, and God says that if you don't listen to him, if you don't take these teachings, if you don't, you know, do that, then you will be cut off. And that's what people need to understand that God is not playing around. God is a jealous God. God won't, you know, he'll hold you accountable because you've had the chance. You've had the chance to listen to Prophet. You've had the chance to get away from T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen and all these other people. You've had the chance. There's no excuse, but God will cut you off. God is a jealous God. God has wrath. God is not going to sit here and, you know, put Prophet on this earth and put True Light on this earth just for people to sit around and say, oh, I just want to follow T.D. Jakes I, because that's what I like. I want to listen to, I want to listen to Rap because that's what I like. No, it's, it's time out for, oh, that's what I like. No, you gotta sit, you gotta sit here and listen to the word of God because time is coming. Do you see all everything that's happening in the world? All these tornadoes, all these hurricanes, fire coming from nowhere, everything that's happening that people don't want to talk about. These things are happening in Ohio and Syria, all these other places, but people don't want to talk about that. People want to talk about the fact that God is coming back. God is coming back and we don't know when God is coming back. He might come back tomorrow and you want to sit here and play around and you don't want to, you don't want to listen to the word of God. The Bible is right here for everybody to listen to. You can, you can go to the store and get the word of God. You can go on YouTube and listen to the word of God. But people don't want to hear the word of God. But it's time out for playing. It's time out. It's time out. God going to cut you off. And you don't have an excuse. You don't have an excuse anymore. It's time to repent. It's time to concentrate. It's time to be a part of the fucking God. Because God is tired. Do you not see all the stuff that's happening? God is trying to get somebody to listen to him. God wants you to listen. Money, people want fame, people want cars, people want all this and that. You don't want to repent. You all you gotta do is let God know that I'm serious, God. I want you so bad that I'm willing to let go of my family. That I want you so bad that I'm willing to let go of my mother. I'm willing to let go of my father. I'm willing to let go of my brother, my sister. God, I want you so bad. That's what you gotta do. You gotta call all these people up. You gotta call out the false prophets. You gotta pray to God and let him know, God, I want you so bad, Lord. I'm looking for you. I'm seeking like we have all had. We had to sit down and evaluate our lives and tell God, God, I, I need you. God, I need you. And God will hear you. If he knows that you are for real, God will hear you. That's all you need is you got to be for real with God. You got to you gotta know because God is not playing yeah. around. Yeah. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Yeah. God is not a joke. It's people will make fun of God. People got gospel songs that sound like rap. It's just, it's just craziness in this world, and I just, ooh, sometimes I have to just, I have to sit back and pray to God, I have to rebuke the devil, because I'm just like, God, it's, it's, it's getting crazy, but I just thank God for just letting us be here, and letting us believe in God, and letting us know that, you know, even though you see all these people, and it might only be a few of us, that we are chosen, you are chosen by God, true, like, uh, I can't, I can't explain it, but just sometimes I, I come to church, and it's like, Whoo, God's spirit just, yeah. he is so strong and oh, yeah. I just want other people, I want other people in the world to feel that because God is real. Yeah. God is real in your life, whatever you might need, whatever you might be going through, God can help you. The devil will not help you. The devil does not want to help you. T.D. Jakes does not want to help you. He wants your money. All those people, they want your money. But if you really want God and you really want to be for real for God, God will be there for you. God will listen to you. And it starts with repenting. It starts with you know, denying that 
that false baptism, it starts with that and just looking at yourself and knowing that God is real and I, we have, we all had to find God for ourselves. We all had to go down in Jesus' name. We all had to repent and be baptized and pretty much turn to the Lord. Give all honor, all praise, all glory to our Heavenly Father. God, His name is Jesus Christ, our loving Lord and Savior, to the head of our lives, our author and finisher of faith. Uh, I'd like to give double honor, double praise to one prophet H. Walker. Give honor and praise to the entire household of faith. Honor and praise to our beloved Mother Smith. Honor and praise to my blessed wife for holiness. Honor, praise, where honor, praise is due. Again, I'd like to thank God for bringing me out of the darkness and bringing me into the marvelous light, and bringing me to a true double and white prophet of the Lord who has brought us up to the mountain with him and is teaching us God's way according to scriptures. Thank God every day for all that he's done for me. And let's give a hand to the powerful teachings of before me, uh, Benjamin Stiles and Elder, uh, Elder Brooks, Senior Elder Brooks. I mean, it's truly powerful. It's hard to follow after something like that. But I'm going to do my best. Uh, tonight, um... Prophet gave us the main text of Matthew 28 and 19 and 20. It says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, uh, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You know, just before the ascension of Jesus Christ, the Lord gave the church the great commission to go and make disciples of all nations. Uh, but, but in this verse it says baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which when said that way, it's an improper baptism. You know, the, the Encyclopedia Britannica, 3rd edition on page 365, yeah. you know, shows that the Catholic Roman Church changed the baptism from, uh, from the name of Jesus yeah. to this Trinitarian baptism, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Right. You know, so either they changed that back in the Council of uh, 325 A.D. in Nicaea, you know, uh, to the uh, to the Trinitarian formula, the baptism they baptize only in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of their sins. Before that, all the apostles baptized that way. So here in Matthew twenty eight nineteen it says the name of there is only one name of all three of those, and that name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, but as I go further into scripture, discipleship is not. Uh, Summarized with becoming a Christian, true discipleship can only happen after salvation, for a disciple is one that learns of Christ and keeps on learning of him. The commission of Christ gave was to make disciples of all nations. Yes. A disciple of Christ is a learner of Christ, and we are all called to be disciples of Christ. We are all learning and constantly maturing in our faith. The commission of Christ gave his own disciples that his session was not simply a call to minister to the lost, who certainly need to learn more about who God truly is in the gift of salvation through Christ Jesus, but is equally a call for all believers to learn of Christ on and keep learning of him throughout their whole lives. So I thank God every day for bringing us to a true double and honor prophet of the Lord who has taught us the true way and has pointed out the error in Scripture and told us who the true God truly is, and his name is Jesus Christ. So as I go into Ezekiel, our reading text, uh, Ezekiel 14, uh, 7 through 8, it says, For every one of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of the iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet to the inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against the man, that man, and will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off, from the midst of my people, and you shall know that I am the Lord. You know, here it shows these men have set up idols in their hearts. God gave Ezekiel some sort of like supernatural insight into the hearts of these leaders, like the leaders mentioned in Ezekiel 8, 10 through 12, and 16. These people were idol worshippers. Their idols were not evident outwardly, but in their hearts. This secret idolatry made them stumble into iniquities. The word of the Lord revealed to him that whatever their outward attitude might be, they were, at heart, idolaters. And he has charged them to declare them that while idolatry remained in their heart, they were necessarily estranged from, from Jehovah. You know, the, the charge against them is that they have been infected by their Babylonian environment and to the attractions of its idolatrous religion. But nothing has charged outwardly in their allegiance to the Lord, but they had taken idols into their hearts. They were like the people in Isaiah's day who draw near to God 
with words but not with their hearts as it says in Isaiah 29 and 13 we'll go there real quick uh, Isaiah 29 and 13 wherefore the Lord said for as much as the people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me but have removed their heart far from me and their fear toward me is taught by the perceptive men you know, Jesus said that uh, the Pharisees in his day were guilty of the same sin as in uh, Matthew 15, 8 through 9. You know, it, it reads, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching me for doctrines the commandments of men. You know, so God asked, Should I let myself be inquired of at all of them, knowing the hidden sin in their lives? God asked Ezekiel an obvious important question. This question with the assumed answer of no showed that God had no obligation to answer the inquiry of these men who harbored such secret sin. So I believe that this verse is important for those who come to the scripture seeking guidance as we here do at True Light. So the scripture proves that no true, no true direction can be given to those who sadly have erected idols in their hearts. So in closing, I pray that these teachings here tonight has reached somebody out there in the wilderness through YouTube and has opened up somebody's heart to turn you away from these false preachers, these T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Joyce Myers, and the list goes on and on and on. You know, it brings you into a better understanding and brings you to God's true mountain to be baptized the proper way, which is in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, put away all your idols in your hearts and in other ways. You know, I thank God so much for all that he's done for us and bringing us to a true double anointed prophet of the Lord who is teaching us God's ways. You know, he is completely loyal to God and he's steadfast and he's unwavering and he will never change. And I'm truly grateful for all of that, you know, and, and I'm grateful for the strength that the Lord has given me every day to move forth against all these devils out there and, and you know, putting the word of God inside of me and holding on to it no matter what because... Now I've got my firm foundation, and the devil can't move me, and right. it does not matter what he does. So I owe it all to prophet, I, and I owe it all to God himself. I thank God for, for all that he's done for me, and I just want to say I love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Walker, I give equal honors, giving honors to whom honors are due, greeting all the household of faith with love and admiration in Jesus' name. Truly, it's a blessing to be again in God's true remnant house. You know, the Acts 238 church, Apostle Peter established on the day of Pentecost, of which I have no doubt. And you can see, you know, where the truth of God is going forth, God is also here and among us. And we follow the King James Version Bible, the only Bible, hallelujah, that we need to use hallelujah that hasn't been thoroughly tainted by corruption and falsehood and lies and innuendo and taking jesus uh, uh out of the bible as uh as, as his deity uh commands you know that he is but these false bibles they take away from the deity of christ so um if you can get your king james bible and follow along with this uh blessed uh message going forth to you today uh the reading text or the main text rather was Matthew 28, 19, and 20, and many of you fall to that scripture trying to give credence to a false form of baptism that God uh, did not authorize. And as we read that, it says in verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, all nations, not just, you know, some in a small corner of the world uh, in the United States, but all nations. You can't say, you know, I'm... I'm Jewish, I'm Hebrew, I'm uh, Venezuelan, or whatever the case may be, you know, but it's all people, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. What is the name? You know, as I brought out earlier in, in a testimony, I, I met a man so foolish in his going and in his ways, um, because he rejects the truth, he rejects knowledge, he yeah. believes in the Trinity, there is no Trinity. Where in the Bible do you find Trinity? There's nowhere in the Bible. 
So if you read the Bible for yourself, you'll find out that there is no trinity in the Bible. All throughout the Bible it says the Lord our God is one Lord. One God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Not two, not three, you know, one. Why is it so hard to believe that there's one God that created everything? One God who was able to come in the flesh as Jesus Christ to save all humanity that would come and receive that salvation. Amen. It's not just it's not just showered on you and you can continue sinning. It's given to those who come and get it. Yeah. You, you are able to be saved if you follow the orders, the rules. So you have to get baptized in the name. The name, the saving name is Jesus. The name is not Father. The name is not Son. The name is not Holy Ghost. The name is Jesus. Oh. And it goes on to say, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. The only way you can have Jesus with you is if you follow his commandments. If you do what he said to do, not just repeating words that he said. I believe um, uh, the Mildred Board, Evangelist Mild Mildred Boyd, whom the prophet speaks highly about, she, uh, the prophet has, has put it brilliantly on and taught well on the, the Godhead. But she also made a statement uh, some time ago. I saw her on YouTube. She said people are baptizing the wrong way. They're baptizing in the titles, doing what Jesus, uh, doing his words. They're just repeating his words, but they're not doing what he said. Jesus did not say for us to just repeat his words. We have to do it in action. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter gave the action. He gave it with, with perfect clarity. Right. Baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How hard is that to understand? There's no division in the Bible. There is no, uh, oh, well, this part says this, and this part says something contradictory. No, the contradiction is in your mind and in your inability to receive the truth of God's word when it comes to you. And the prophet of God has preached the truth of God's word, not just from his mouth, but from what God has given him. And in the word of God, he shows it to you. Your pastor, your false pastor is not going to take you to Acts 2.38 because he himself or she herself praise God, has not been baptized correctly themselves. Why in the world would they read it to you so that now you can put a spotlight on them to find out, well, why have you not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Well, guess what? They need to, to follow the word of God and do what Jesus said because in doing that, that's the only way you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth that comes to leading God in all truth, that keeps you from being an idolater. You know, that keeps you from sinning, from fornicating, from being a sodomite, from being a lesbian, from bringing back into the church of God. In which case, you haven't brought it into the church of God because it's not here, praise God. But you've brought it into other churches that people are trying to find holiness. They're trying to find the truth of God's word. You can present that and feed the sheep as Jesus told Peter to do instead of trying to feed them what you want them to have, which is just a way to get into their pockets. Uh, but, you know, praise God. I'm glad that we have the truth here and the prophet of God teaches us and shows us. He has not shunned it and turned to us all of the counsel of God as uh, Apostle Paul did also. And I'll go to Ezekiel, the reading text, uh, chapter 14, verses 7 and 8. And that reads, For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself, and I will set my face against that man, and will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You know, it goes on to say, and, and if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. Oh, hello, T.D. Jakes, Joyce Myers, Benny Hinn, Creflo Dollar, all you other liars out there and deceivers. God has deceived you because you can't pick up the Bible and find any clarity of understanding in it anymore because you left away from the truth of God's word with your idols, with your idolatry. The filthy lucre is your chief idol. You're trying to uh, just get the people's money. You could care less about their soul's salvation. What is that? You can't inquire of God. You can't even get a prayer through for yourself. That's why your medicine cabinet is full. Run it over. 
take pills. What about the side effects? What are you going to do then? You know, you get a pill to uh, so-called cure you of this, cure you of that. There is no cure. That's why you have these side effects. Do you know how many people die from side effects from these medications? Amen. These doctors are not trying to get you into heaven. They're trying to get you into a state of constant dependency upon medication, Amen. feeding their pockets. That's not the way. You can't get a prayer through. If you could, you would be teaching your people the right way. Then God would hear you. God would listen to your prayer. He's not listening to you because you're not saying anything of any relevance. You're like Satan coming to report to God what you've been doing as you go to and fro, deceiving God's people, seeking who you can destroy and devour. But that's not true light. We preach the truth of God's word. We don't go after idolatry. We're not trying to celebrate Christmas, Easter, Lent, all those pagan holidays that man has created from worshiping Satan and from feeding on their own flesh. That's all they're trying to do is feed their own bellies. But we, we don't do those things here at True Light. And you won't come to True Light. Why? Because you don't want your evil deeds reproved. But there is one, someone out there that wants to be saved in the Bible way. And those other people that we're trying to reach, not the naysayers or the gainsayers. The Bible is for those who want to be saved. It's not for an arguing point for those that want to rebel. Hell has been made for those who want to rebel, you know, and God will see you to it. But for those that want salvation, the holiness way, come on and get water baptized in Jesus' name. If you've been baptized incorrectly the first time, like I was, I humbled myself and got re-baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I won't go there, but in Acts chapter 19, you'll find the story. There were some Ephesian brothers were baptized over because they were baptized the wrong way. They had the humility to get baptized in Jesus' name and then be in God's plan of salvation. If you're not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, not the titles, you are not saved. No matter what your false preacher's telling you, no matter what the person sitting next to you is telling you, no matter what Romans 10 and 9 you're repeating is what you're imagining is telling you, you're not saved. You have to get water baptized in Jesus' name in order to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and then follow after God's prophet and be taught the right way so that you don't become lost in idolatry. Pray my strength in the Lord. All right. The next segment will be Elder Kenya. Elder Smiley. And Evangelist Smith in that order. Amen. 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 God worthy. Worthy praise. And lift the great God up in the name of Jesus. Your mother praise. Yes. All the honor, all the glory, amen. Yes. All honor is over by the one prophet Walker, yes. first lady Mother Walker, and two men, one guy indeed. Yes. Yes. The Bible says, Stephen, a very high for her labor's sake. Yes. Yes. The honor to your heart, your honor to Also to the love and memory of our beloved Mother Smith. Amen. Let's get a proper hand for his powerful, powerful words. Yes. Let's get his speakers a hand. Yes. Oh, goodness. Ain't we having a great time, amen? Hallelujah, amen. Glory. One to around to your text. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Yeah. Oh, so, so shall it be. Go baptize in the name, and that name is Jesus, yes. as it's been brought up so eloquently by the prophet. Amen. Now, why does the false church baptize false and holy ghost? Because they're ignorant <laughs> to the word of God. Amen. Because when you follow false teachings, it, it, it reflect your character reflects truly who you are. Amen. That's why I thank God for a true man of God, amen, amen. who has a, a great character, amen, a character above reproach, amen. amen. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 7 and 8, it's, it's getting better. For everyone of the house of Israel, of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separated himself from me, and set up his idols in his heart, and put the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to a prophet, 
to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people. And you shall know that I am the Lord. God said he'll cut you off or he'll kill you. Yeah. Oh, I thought God was love. Amen. When they run to the judgment throne, Lord, have not prophesied your name. Lord, have not did this. Lord, have not did that. Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Ye yeah. that work in Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. T.D. Jakes, George Meyer, Joe Osteen. Amen. Yeah. Get away from me. Amen. Get in there with your master saying amen. amen. Where were you when the prophet died? Amen. It was preaching his heart out. Amen. Yeah. Where were you? Amen. Lord. Where were you? But I used to go at true light. Why you lead true light, amen? Where were you, amen? amen? Praise God. God said, I'm going to cut you off, amen. God not playing. The problem ain't playing. True light ain't playing, amen. Devil, hallelujah, we're going to continue to block out your eyes, amen. You can't call no stomach block for the true light, amen. For the men of God, amen. For the children of God, Luke, you in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Who you think you are, amen. We more than the conqueror. We more than you. Hallelujah. We more than your... We more than with your children, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We got the sword. We got the word of God. We got the man of God, amen. So what you gonna do about that, amen? Praise God, hallelujah. What you gonna do, Satan? Bring it on. Bring it on, praise God. Hallelujah, amen. We gotta teach the people. Preach the word. Be instant in season and not in season. Reprove. Rebuke. We're all long suffering and doctrine. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Preach the word. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. We must go into the hedges and the byways. Compel the people to come in. Amen. Yeah. I can't wait to go to my spot. The same spot I've been going to for the last 10 years. Hallelujah. Amen. The last 15 years since I've been down here. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with passing out tracks, but preachers, we gotta preach, cry out, and spare not, amen. And we too afraid to preach the truth. Yeah, who gonna preach the truth? Amen. Hallelujah. So preach, preach your heart, amen. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. For the power of salvation, amen. Praise God. Amen. We got some good preachers, amen. amen. We got a great leader, amen. We got a great necessary, amen. I can't wait to get out there, amen. I'm looking for one lost soul. That's it. Amen. Don't be afraid. It had been so many times, especially back in Detroit. I'm passing out tracks, amen. I'm picking them up. People spin on the tracks. People cuss me up. Person spit in my face. But glory ain't about me. Kenya Ali Smith died. 24 years ago. Elder Kenya now lives, amen. amen. We got to put ourselves on the back burner. Amen. What you do for Christ that count, amen. Praise God. Amen. It's all about our calling, amen. It's so immense. In closing, be strong. Amen. Be strong. Stay focused. Stay on the ship. Pray for me as I pray for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Say it. Amen. 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 Some, some powerful messages today. Amen. 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 Start out with prophet. Amen. With that powerful message. Amen. 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 Thank God for us. The true light. I ain't going to be before you all. I give honor to, to God who is the author and finisher of my faith. Amen. Yes. Yes. Giving double honor to God's true prophet. Bishop yes. Prophet H. Walker. First and next lady, Mother Walker. God, Let's give a hand to all the preachers in the household of faith that came before me and after me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. My, I'm on fire. I, as well as everybody else in true light. Amen. Amen. Starting with who? Our leader. Amen. Amen. I want to, I'm going to open up and uh, and uh, where we uh, all were born to. Matthew uh, 28th chapter. Uh, I thank God for, for this uh, verse, be uh, these two verses, because, man, I like to, to bring it out to people a lot that I talk to, because, man, so many people are stuck on the Trinity. So many people are going to hell because of the Trinity. 
But didn't the Bible speak against popularity? Yes. Come on. Look how many denominations is Trinitarians. Yes. That should tell you something. Amen. Uh, Matthew, the 28th chapter, uh, starting verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. If you got the Holy Ghost, if you know who Jesus is, he's with you always. Yeah. Even until the end of the world, amen. Well, that's brought, uh, they brought out, that is, it shall be so. Amen. Thank God for the word because I, when I bring this out to people, <laughs> and I like bringing it out a lot because there's so many people you meet and they say, oh, I'm saved and, I, and I'm a Christian, but you're a Trinitarian. No, you're not saved according to scripture because I like to take a, a, a lot of times to, to the book of Acts, which as our prophet brings out. Acts is the, the actions of the apostles. Yeah. What did apostles do? Yeah. One thing that they did a lot in the book of Acts was they baptized. Yeah. Now follow the Son of the Holy Ghost. But see, when you got the Spirit of God, see, that's what I think out for uh, 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Yes. That you what? You study to show yourself approved yeah. yeah. unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yeah. Or as prophet brought out before, um, correctly interpreting the Bible. Yes. Amen. A lot of people are so stuck. <laughs> I just can't believe it. So many people are stuck on this talking about Begotten or, uh, or well, what are they talking about the, the Son of God? Well, when you read the Bible from a, a logic point of view, logic don't get you in heaven. The Spirit gets you in heaven. Amen. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Ezekiel, the 14th chapter. Yes. Amen. That, I love when Man, I love when the word of God come forth and you catch one of them them hypocrites talking about Jesus and not uh, especially those people who go out and they witnessing and everything. Oh well, hold on, let me let me talk to you for a moment. Let, let's see what's going on with you. Cause I, and I guarantee you say, Oh, I'm a Trinitarian, yeah, I baptize. And what's so crazy is it's, it's so confusing because people say, Oh well, uh, Jesus uh, who is God also but then the father they stumbling so much I don't even be remember what in the world they be talking about so what they so confused like this is what I'm talking about see when you when you have a true leader a true prophet that's sent and not as everybody's brought out not in the Creflo Dollar and T.D. Jakes church but in true light where you hear the word of truth whether you like it or not that's why they will put us on that that uh, most hated list for the LGBTQ. No, we no we we're spreading love because we're telling you the truth. But people are hypocrites, man, and people don't want that spirit. You want by by logic, and you're going to hell by logic. Amen. Uh, Ezekiel the 14th chapter uh, was uh, seven and eight, uh, and 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 I love this too because it's, it's so deep. And man, just the whole book of Ezekiel is deep. But yeah. anyway, we're gonna go here. Uh, Ezekiel 14, chapter starting at verse seven. For everyone of the house of Israel, or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me, see that's a problem. You separate yourself from God, being a Trinitarian, because you don't know who God is. Amen. And set and set up. Up his idols in his heart. See, idols ain't necessarily you you ball into a, a stone or something like that. No, uh, idols in your heart. Mm -hmm. That can be a, a, any type of spirit, a cussing spirit, a malice spirit, a sodomite, a lesbian spirit. Mm -hmm. That could be any spirit that could be a, a, a represented as towards a uh, idolatry. Hey man, uh, let's read on. Um, uh, idols in his heart and put up the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me I the Lord will answer him by myself now that's a scary thing because we're going to find out how the Lord answer you by himself verse 8 and I will set my face man that's scary 
set my face against that man yes. and will make him a sign and a proverb mm -hmm. and I will cut him off my goodness from the midst of my people who is God people not no Trinitarians amen. The Trinitarians cut off amen <laughs> It definitely ain't no, uh, uh, it ain't a homosexual, it ain't a lesbian with all that. Oh, well, uh, uh, save uh, trans lives matter, all this. No, no. you you made yourself that trans uh, uh, idolatry in yourself. You put self before God. See, that's what people's problems is. Oh, well, I have the right to, no, you have a right to serve God. See, people have got so far from the truth. Let's come back to the truth. Amen. You cut you, yourself cut off. And I was just thinking about, uh, and I'm, I'm getting ready to sit down, I'm closing. I was just thinking about uh, last night, uh, man, the, the incident that happened. But my goodness, because you you call somebody out on on their faults and you tell them they're a hypocrite. They want to throw a, a rock through a window. But my thing is, Man, listen, after cleaning all that stuff up and, you know, everything was said and done, I wanted to sleep so peacefully. Why? Because, man, when you got the spirit of God, man, there ain't nothing else. It's, it's all about servitude to God. Like Proverbs brought out before, you know, mind is on heaven. That's all that matters. The devil can't, listen, you dance in the devil's face, and we're going to continue, as, as Elder brought out, we're going to continue to dance, and we're going to continue to smile, and we're going to laugh at that devil, because he ain't did nothing to us. And man, I, man, people are, just like Elder brought out, man, people are trying to wet my Bible up, and wet me up, and my goodness, throwing stuff through a window, and... But through it all, amen, we still got Jesus, and we on a Friday night, feeling, <laughs> we feel good, don't we? <laughs> Boy, I can't stop smiling. Amen. God, pray about the shit, brother. Thank you. All right, Jesus Christ, I'm in my life, come on, Prophet Walker, Lady, Lady, Lady Mother Walker, I appreciate the gospel, thank you for and friends, and all the elders, ministers, evangelists, everybody in God's um, household of faith. And I just want to give a hand to all the, the word of God that's going forth because it's just so like sweet. It's so sweet to my soul. And I love hearing the word of God. Not like the word of God because the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. And a lot of people don't want the word because they don't want God. And, and Prophet brought out some powerful scriptures today. I want to go to the first one and it's right here. X, excuse me, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Go, ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And this is where the problem lies. So many people don't have humility to be taught, because that's where it all lies, the humility. And if you don't have humility in the church of God, you don't have the church of God at all. There is no church of God without humility. There is no church of God without a leader sent by God. All you got is a bunch of confusion. Because they keep teaching people you baptize, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But you, did, you forgot the biggest word there, the name. The name. The name. There's power in the name. Healing in the name. Miracles in the name. Salvation in the name. Deliverance in the name. Why do they do that? Because the devil don't want you to be free. The devil don't want you to be healed. According to Psalm chapter, uh, chapter 107, verse 20, and the word will heal them. He said, by my stripes ye are healed. Now you take, now he can't be talking about a natural healing. But he first he talked about the spiritual healing. It'd be what? To be forgiven from our sins. And you got to be forgiven from the sins that you know that offended God. You are a sodomite, you are a lesbian, you are offending God, and you need to repent. There is no in-between sex. There is either male or female, and that is it. That's what the word of God says, right? Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. For in doing this, thou shalt save both them that hear thee. Because in the doctrine is the truth. And people want to be so happy, they want to stand up. And this like, everybody look at me, see who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching this and that, but you're not living a word you're saying. Amen. You're a hypocrite. Amen. And that's why I want to take you on to what Prophet had brought up for the, the story today in Ezekiel. They're a bunch of hypocrites. Yeah. Bunch of hypocrites. I'm going to call you a bunch of hypocrites. That's why that person got so mad at Elder Smiley because they know what he was saying was the truth. Yeah. The word is like a two-edged sword is going to cut and obviously cut somewhere. But I pray that he cut and not get so proud and say, oh, I'm still going to stay like a 
devil. Well, why don't you repent and go over and walk down this morning and tell, what are you doing that's right that's pleasing the Lord? Because I need to be like you. We don't need to be like Cain who killed Abel because God was pleased with his sacrifice. All you had to do was be humble and say, what did you do? So that I could please God the same way that you're doing. We don't want to be a murderer in the spiritual sense. And, and in Ezekiel chapter 13, it brings it all up. These people don't want to repent. I'm going to go back one verse. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn yourselves from idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. And let me tell you one thing. When God talks about idols, and he, he's serious about that. He, God is a consuming fire. It's, it's, a, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing, because I wanted to go, I'm, I'm going to come back to there, but in Exodus chapter 20, that's where it gives all the Ten Commandments. And it said, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out the land of Egypt. I brought you out the world, right? right. So why do you want to go back to there? Why do you want to go back in bondage? Because you're holding all these secret uh, things in your heart. Whether it's envy, it's jealousy, strife, you want to please your flesh. you got to put the TV down, okay, and pick up the Bible. You got to put your pleasure thing down and pick up the Bible. You got to do uh, go out and witness more. And most importantly, don't be a hypocrite. Live what you preach every day so people can see that there's somebody who can live for, for Christ. And in verse 3, uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that is the scripture I wanted to bring. And these people, basically their God, their idol was themselves. And most people put themselves in front of God, what God's calling is for your life. Not about what you want to be. Oh, I thought I was going to be a famous singer or something like that. No, I want you to come and sing for the Lord. So many people out there have been blessed with singing ability at whatever God gave because the Bible says the gifts and calls of, of God is about repentance. So it's there. But you chose to give it to the world instead of give it to the kingdom of God. Do you know how much somebody can be blessed by that voice and by a person living by what they're singing in the words and that, that song you're singing how much souls you can bring in but they look at you and they know that you just like them when it all come down to it because you still got them earrings swinging that makeup on the fake eyelashes fake hair but yet you're still trying to praise God with all that and your pants on See, but you can't do that. You can't do that. That's what these people, get. They, they're idols in their heart. For everyone in the house of Israel, the stranger that should judge Israel would separate himself from me. You separate yourself from God when you hold all this iniquity inside. Right. But see, God said, what? Well, man, you know, look at the outward appearance, but God look on the heart. You know, God don't, don't look how man look. You don't see how man see. What appears to you, it, it, it ain't the same thing with God. You can try to hide and fake it and everything else before your brother, sister, Christ, before a uh, prophet. It don't matter. Because God said, I love how he bring it out in, in the latter part of this. He said, and put it the stumbling back of his iniquity before his face. So you're going to bring it before you on the day of judgment. And he said, and, to, uh, and coming to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. Well, he said, well, I can just skip over that. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. So God, when, when God judgment comes, come, you don't want that. You want to be under a true prophet like Prophet H. Walker so you get a chance to save yourself before it's everlasting too late. He said, I set my face against the man. I'll make him a sign and a proverb, an example in a negative way, and I will cut him off in the midst of my people, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So don't get so comfy and cozy, even though we are in the true church. That you say, we, 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 we are on the sly, you know, coattail, and we can just go, oh, I know the prophet. I'm going to go have this because I knew prophet. That's not enough. You got you to give your heart, soul, mind, strength, everything you've got. Because didn't Jesus give it to you? He died on the cross. He didn't quit, and you better not quit on him. Because the Bible says you made a vow to the Lord. You better pay that vow. And I remember that scripture so strong. You better pay the vow. People think you come to a church, I'm trying to climb some social ladder. Now you may be trying to climb Jacob's ladder and get your soul saved and go to heaven. I don't understand all this foolishness. It's too much play. That's one of the evangelists brought out. Why are you playing? You must be praising God, worshiping God, or being obedient to the instructions of Christ. That's too much play. It's not a game, okay? You're going to hell or you're going to heaven. There is no in-between place. Like the Roman Catholic Church talking about this. Please ain't no purgatory. All this foolish stuff. All these false teaching. And that's what Paul was trying to bring up when he brought about the baptism. The devil was trying to slick, be slick and play with words. And he said, with all these uh, fair speeches and, and uh, it's, it's, it's all these uh, genealogies and stuff, people try to choose words to try to confuse you. But I'm telling you, a true soul will see through all that, and they're going to keep searching for Christ. They say, something about this ain't right. See, yeah. God knows the Spirit. says, seek this. Uh, Try the Spirit by the Spirit. And you're going to find out if you're just seeking God, He's going to lead you to this true church. He's going to lead you to Prophet Walker. There's no way down about it. God said, seek, you should find and knock on the door shall be open. 
Now, uh, so many people, it's time to, like somebody said, it's time to get back in God's word. And it's time for us to stop harboring things that you know is true about yourself and get it right and bring it for the mountain. Because you got to cleanse yourself for these things secret false. It's going to be too late when God comes back to split the sky. Right. Yeah. Say, call, you know, so many people are going to put themselves before Christ. And the basic thing is stop feeding the flesh, which the prophet was bringing out. Start feeding your spirit. Amen. Because th 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 this is it. This is it. The days are winding down. Like, he can come back anytime. Yes. And also in Exodus, it says, uh, um, oh, I brought that out. And, and an idol is anything. See, some people think it's just like uh, this one thing, but it's anything that you put above Christ. Anything you put above what God telling you to do. Oh, I'm too tired to do this. Oh, somebody else can do this. But I told you to do this. You know, God wants to see, can you follow instruction? That's the only way he can separate his people from the false church. Can you follow and be obedient? And we are to be baptized in Jesus' name. I want to go to in Jesus' name. I was about to bring that out. They just said there's salvation by none other name under heaven by which man shall be saved. And Acts, and I want to go to Acts 19 and 5. I just want to read that so some people out there can see these are the actions of the apostles. And when they heard that they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And we all are familiar with Acts 2.38. I want to read that one too. Acts 2 I know, but I, I can't get enough of reading that scripture because that's how it saved me. I am where I am because of that scripture. People don't understand. I literally am where I am because of that scripture. I, I'm telling you about my story. I said, follow my mother around the different church. I said, no, 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 no. I, I know that ain't right. It ain't, it ain't right. And I just kept going. I said, I kept searching and searching and searching. I was baptized. <laughs> Father, Son, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. I knew that ain't right. I said, this ain't right. I kept searching and searching and searching. One day I turned on the radio and Prophet Walk was there. And I've been here ever since. Because I kept searching because I know something ain't right. Yeah. If something wasn't right because you can feel it, it ain't right. So you got to get baptized in Jesus' name and apologize in Jesus' name. So God ended up me having me in that, at a, uh, a, a, like a bilingual Hispanic church and uh, community. And he, he opened the word and showed me being baptized in Jesus' name. I got baptized the next day. I bet the next day I want to get baptized that night, but it was too late to go back to church because I saw the word. He showed me the word and he was teaching me. See, people don't want to open up this Bible because it's going to spoil all your darkness that you have. Too much darkness in you. We almost have no darkness and true light. This is a true light church. We don't have no envy and strife and jealousy, nothing like that. Trying to be deceitful and saying one thing but yet meeting another. But God see that. And one day you're going to be down by the smoke. And, and the worst thing, you're going to be cut off. Stop doing that. Stop playing with church. Stop playing with your brother and sister because you might be wounded a soul. And you gonna, that blood going to be in your hands. The blood of your brother and sister going to be on your hands. You know, might have a bad day but don't, don't take it out on your brother and sister. You can't take it out on somebody else because you do having a hard time. Amen. And I, I don't want to say too much, uh, I'm going to speak too long because we only have a short amount of time. But I'm saying this word is we're real. God is real. And I, and I know the power of God. I've seen the power of God. I remember one person came in here, you got, you got her blessing. Uh, she, was, she was so sick with cancer, and then she got healed, and she never came back to profit. All these people, one person, child was lame, started walking in the daycare, but why they leave God? They see miracle. And you, you tell me you don't know that, that God is real? I've seen it with my own eyes. I've been here for 23 years. I see people come and go. But I'm going to tell you, only a few people are the faithful. He got, I read promise to stay on seven mile. He's only going to be for the faithful. He kept saying it over and over again, pound it. He's only going to be the faithful. He said he give this word to those that are the faithful, and we want to be the faithful. It doesn't matter about number. Not at all. If you think about the story of, 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 of Noah, he was preaching, what, like 120 years. Who ended up getting saved? Only Noah and his own family. Nobody else was on that ark but two other animals. Keep every animal in his own family. So I don't care about no number. He care about a soul that want to be right. And you got to want to be right. I want to be whole today. That's the only way you're going to be whole. Because I'm going to be right. I'm going to be righteous. I'm going to follow the command of this Bible. I have to play my script in Let's have uh, uh, Elder Wagner with a summation. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The highest praise yeah. to the Lord our God, the great God of glory, soon coming King, yeah. promise keeper. We love yeah. you, Jesus. Amen. So we give you all honor and praise, Lord God, and thank you for dying for our sins on Calvary and making us that great promise as our prophet told us about. Go and do anything, remember the promise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. And also double honor to our great prophet, fearless leader, Prophet Bishop Walker. Beautiful, lovely, 
I will walk there, hallelujah. All the preachers of the gospel, it's time now to give our great props and a great big hand praise for the powerful text and the word he brought for us earlier, and then also all these preachers preaching under the Holy Ghost. I thank God for it. I just want to just briefly mention um, church, I tell you, you know, just sitting there and listening to our prophet and how he so eloquently brought these scriptures forth and told us some things that, uh, and he always tells us things we need to know because we're trying to get, we, we're already on our way to heaven. Hallelujah. And we are trying to do what God tells us to do so that we can see his face in peace. That's what this is all about. And, I, and the reason prophet brought these scriptures out so, from, 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 from what I understand is, is that, uh, talking about the main text, you know, uh, without having the water baptism in the precious name of Jesus, there is no salvation. Yes. Now that's powerful. All these churches, all these people going to all these churches, all these Catholic, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of Christ, I can keep going on and on, mm -hmm. have omitted the basic principle of salvation, repentance, and water baptism in the name, Amen. and not the titles. So all you're doing, all you're getting, and you don't have any understanding, That's right. because you don't have the great man of God, Prophet Bishop H. Walker, Amen. to minister these teachings. Well, let me say, let me, let me change that. You got him. You know how I heard about him? I heard about him through radio. Yeah. You can hear about him through YouTube. Yeah. Word of mouth. You got no excuse. I believe Romans said they are without excuse. Yeah, right. Hallelujah. So then Prophet also brought out uh, Ezekiel 14, 7, and 8. And I'm not going to go to these scriptures because they've been brought out so beautiful. Amen. But here you find out that God is, is very upset here. Right, man. Not too nice about God being nice here. Um, he, has, he said he set his face against anyone who seeks after a person who really is not teaching truth. Right. You go into a church where a man don't, it had not been water by, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, so he don't have the spirit of Christ. Right. He can't teach you the truth, right. but you yearning for this. Oh man, you go, you got, you eat it up. Right. I got to go, I got to go. But you know why you got to go? Because the devil's there and you're following the devil. Yeah. You got earrings, makeup on, jewelry on. You got sodomites and lesbian teaching. Y'all teaching baby murder? Yeah. You're teaching everything. And matter of fact, most of y'all teaching about uh, worshiping a statue. Yeah. That's right. And praising Mary. Mary's a good woman. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But she's not divine. Yeah, go through Mary to get to Jesus? The God of glory? That don't even sound right. right. But you got this man sitting up uh, who, I guess somewhere in the Vatican, he's got a whole bunch of money. Oh, you're going after money now. Oh, the money is what draws you because if, if they got the money, I know they're blessed and highly favored. Yeah, the Bible says you're wicked. Yeah. Amen. I believe the book of Revelation says that uh, you don't have any knowledge. Yeah. You're on your way to hell. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I like what God is saying. Follow the truth. Don't hire nobody. Don't get nobody to tell you anything different than what God has told you because here God said, I'll turn my face against you and one scripture in the Revelation, he said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Right. No, we don't want to be spewed out of God's mouth. Right. Oh, Lord, we want to see his face in peace. Right. They cannot speak for God, for they are enemies of God. I wrote this down myself. Uh, they wrongly divide the scripture. Anybody who you get to tell you something other than what prophet walked. Let's, let's, let's bring it home. Right. This book of Ezekiel here, 14, 7, and 8, literally God is upset with these people because they won't follow a true prophet. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Ain't that something? We right down the street from all these devils. Whole bunch of, you know, we come to church tonight, whole, we pass a whole bunch of churches. Uh, yeah. all right. Every time you, we, you pass a whole bunch, but little troop lights right down the street. The word is right there. Amen. All you need is right here. Right. Ooh, powerful. Strong. Yeah. You don't know why some, sometimes you get on your job and they hate you and they talk about you? Not because you're doing something wrong, because you're doing something right. Amen. That's right. Amen. The word convicts them. We are not convicted. Amen. Amen. We stand strong. Now, real briefly, uh, myself, when I was in Flint, and I knew something was wrong, and man, I said, Lord, I said, you know what, I don't know. And you know, I had got some money for something, you know, and I said, Lord, show me somebody I can get some of this money to, because I want to pay my tithes. I'm serious about what I'm doing. I want, I want to do this right. None of them teaching truth. 
But when I heard Prophet Bishop H. Walker teach me about that Christmas thing, I said, listen, something wrong. there's something right with this situation here. Right. This is what I'm looking for. Yeah. God will always use a little bit of something to pull you in, to get you to the what you where you really need to eat. All right. he, you know how, how you do an animal? I'm just using that analogy. Oh, yeah. He'll take this little string and put this little thing on it and pull you. Next thing you know, you can follow it there. You follow this, you follow that. Right. They yeah. say, you know, you're right with a meal in. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I'm right with a meal. Where I really was, what I really need, that's where I really am. Yeah. Father, told me about the water baptism in Jesus' name. Yeah. And man, I heard that, I said, oh my goodness, I ain't never heard nothing like this before. What is going on here, Lord? I was coming for one other thing. You trying to get me saved. Oh, We're trying to get you saved. Yeah. We're trying to get you to the point where you can be humble enough to say, you know what? Yes. I give. They right. I'm wrong. Yeah. Prophet is right. That's why you've been watching us. Yeah. And uh, real quick, on your job, don't don't be too hard on the people on the job, because you might save a soul by wearing your veil. No makeup, no jewelry. We got to talk too much. They can see it. So, church, we are truly blessed. Amen. Let's give our great God another big hand. Yeah. Let's, give our, let's give the preachers another big hand. Praise. Yeah. Ain't good. Thou art good and do it good. Teach us thy statutes. I told you before, somebody said he was mm -hmm good. Right. We're going to have a fun words and dismiss from our, our deacon. We ain't going to forget about him. Amen. But I just want y'all be sitting for one minute. I want y'all to read that. They're reading text again. I'm proud of the soldiers Amen. on the battlefield for the Lord. I just want to put my, my two cents in here. Amen. For every one of the house of Israel, or the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, now the house of Israel, read, which separated himself from me, and set up his idols in his heart, and put the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face. And now, then, now the ones who the Bible says had come in strangers to be a part of Israel. The prophets then were in a backslidden condition. Therefore, they were teaching the strangers, and strangers being those who have been proselyted into the Hebrew faith. But the prophets were false teachers. So they were seducing the strangers who come in to learn about Jehovah. They were seducing them also. Amen. Now, did not, the book of Revelation said concerning the synagogue of Satan. Yes. So, teaching them to observe whatsoever God had commanded. Yes. Somewhere along the line, they forgot to teach the people the truth. Glory. Let's give the preachers a hand for a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> presentation tonight. And there is no way that when I'm gone, you're going to abandon the ship. Because you know what? you got too much word now inside of me to ever turn back on God. Amen. I just, I think it's coming back just a few words. Praise the Lord. Give my name to the I'm going to say more about the Levi and Stuart, Mother Smith High School, honestly, and I thank God for the word from the teachers, the man, just to briefly summarize the main text, Matthew chapter 28, verses 19, talking about the importance of baptism, um, not in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but in the name of Jesus. The Bible is a set of rules, and one of the rules is that you have to be baptized in order to be saved. Um, reading text was Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 7 through 8, talking about... Um, a man who had idols in his heart, and then as it was brought out last week, um, God hates idols, he hates jewelry, and especially the earrings, and he took away the earrings in um, the Old Testament, I believe it was Genesis, and then, um, as it was brought out, the idols can mean different things, whether it's the Christmas tree, jewelry, um, money, um, that's what the false preachers today, they teach compromise because it brings the 
people in so they can take their money in, man. And let them think that they can live any type of way that they, in order to be saved, but you can't live in a compromised way. And man, so we thank God for the words from the two Christians now. Man, I'll stand and be dismissed. May we we'll watch between me and D. While we're absent, one toward another. In Jesus' name.